everyone and welcome. My name is Chris McCulley. I'm presenting this month for the DWF a couple different options for uh, custom mapping. So sit down, relax, grab something cold to drink. Don't forget your pen and paper. In a couple seconds, we'll get this part started. Quick shout out to Teach and Fishing for letting us borrow their studio because without it, you wouldn't be able to see some of the things that you, you have been missing for a long time on mapping and how it's going to change the way you fish. All right, let's get started. If we go to our first slide here, you're gonna notice there's a lot going on. Some of it looks familiar. Yep, we got sonar, we've got fish. But on that chart page, there's a lot going on. A few of you may have seen it, a lot of you haven't. Some of it we're gonna talk about, some of it we're gonna save for another day. If you look at all maps that haven't been actually created with the sonar log, they were all done with benchmarks, transits, rocks, and rope, or string, depending. Where they, some were done for fishing, some were done for simply surveying, some were done for water projects. But at the end of the day, they were all done by hand. Everything that was done by hand in a place that you can't go or physically see is never going to be truly as accurate is something that we can actually log and see. If you look here, this, this map right here was hand drawn in 1959. There are actually a lot of maps that are actually quite a bit older than 1959. That's actually a somewhat recent hand drawn rendition. But if we actually took, take a peek and look and see here, this is something that was redrawn as new mapping in 2014. It's not new, it's just, just a computer rendition. Nothing's changed. We still have our two same holes here. Actually humps, I'm sorry, I'm looking at it backwards. Humps, you know, we still got our same little points. We've got our same hole here, nothing's changed. And if you look still here, that hole's still there, that one's still there. Obviously I can't quite see that one, I believe that little icon's covered it. But if you look at something that was drawn with sonar log mapping in 2013, it's all changed. Not only is it all changed, there was actually a point here the entire time. How would that affect your fishing? A point that never existed before. It should change your fishing. And depending on boat's draft, it could change your navigation. First up is Lorient's Genesis Live Mapping. This is available to units, um, Elite TI series, Elite TI2, Elite FS, which is the newly released one. Hook two units that have cartography. Hook reveal units, whether or not they're an X model, and on HDS Gen 3 and newer units. All that's required to do this is an SD card, 32 gig or smaller. SD card, 32 gigs in this case. If you're gonna notice here, it's actually an SD card, full size adapter, and a micro card. All the units that take the live layer or the free, the, the Genesis Live, the free layer of mapping require a micro card. Don't throw away the adapter. I've got something coming where we actually need this too. Simply take the blank card, insert it in the card reader, go to overlay, select Genesis Live. The reason that it says Genesis Live is because we're actually recording here. You won't see the overlay layer say Genesis Live on the screen until you actually select it. To record Genesis Live, you must have a cartography page up. Whether it's a full screen like you see here, or whether we jump back here and take a peek, a chart split is fine, and the, this split can be anything. But as long as you have the chart page up, it will record. If you leave a chart page, it will stop recording and resume recording once you go back. So if you don't want a bunch of holes in your map, just keep the chart page up. This records to the card, will not record to your unit, but it cannot be shared between units. So if you're doing a large body of water, label your card, maybe you need to get a couple cards. If you're doing smaller bodies of water, you may be able to fit a couple bodies of water on a card. This will actually record up to 20 miles an hour 
If your transducer is not set well, it will stop recording at a lower speed and it'll actually go back to the stock mapping. If your transducer is set well, it may actually record at a higher speed. The highest I've personally seen is about 24 miles an hour on my boat. If you look at this, we have our stock mapping here and we have what's being redrawn. If you see, if you can read this contour, this says 74 feet. If we line up with the live mapping, it's saying 56 feet, and even way out here, it's still only hitting 62 feet. How bad was that mapping? How would that change your fishing? How would that change your navigation? This is not a navigational aid, but how could it change everything and how you perceive you're attacking your, your day for, whether it's fun, whether it's fishing? It can change it all. Up next here, we have the CMAP Genesis Social Map. This actually includes a lot more units, but will not include Lawrence units with X models. You actually have to have a cartography base layer mapping available on your Lawrence unit to use this. Once again, we're using a 32 gig card, the card holder. Most PCs and laptops need a card, full size card reader. Most of them do not have, just simply plug in the small card. Now you can actually insert the card. And the reason this is important is all of this mapping that you see here is done with sonar logs. Sonar logs can be recorded on the same card as a Genesis Live map, or they can be recorded on separate cards. Simply insert the card card reader again, press the power button, and you're gonna see log sonar. Press the button to log sonar, or touch the screen, depending where you have a touch screen or not, and log sonar. In the upper right hand corner, you're going to see a red dot as it's recording. It's gonna flash intermittently. You will also get a black box down here that will actually say recording sonar or logging sonar. Actually, I believe it says recording, but it will record for about three hours or so. It, it kind of depends a little bit, I believe, on depth, speed, so the details. When it's done recording, you can either press the power button and stop logging the sonar, or it will time itself out. If it times itself out, unless you have multiple, multiple days of sonar logs, simply press the power button, start logging your next sonar log. You can put at least a week of time on a 32 gig card that was empty for logging sonar. When you're done logging the sonar, take it home, Insert it into your laptop PC, however you want. Go to genesismaps.com. At that point, you can, if you haven't signed up for an account, you can sign up for a free account, you can sign up for a pay account. But either way, you will need the content ID number and serial number from at least one of the units, and I would say the one that you actually use the cards on. If you have multiple units, you can add multiple units to your account, but Grab the content ID number and serial number from your unit. It needs to be exact. You can sign up for an account. It attaches to an email address. And then you can, at that point, once your account's set up, you can actually upload a sonar log. The nice thing about the sonar logs versus live mapping, if you're going to a new body of water and somebody sonar logged it and it has accurate, now accurate contours, you have access to it provided you have an account and you've actually uploaded some sonar logs. Before it was, you were able to <clears throat> gain what you're able to share. Now, it's all available to everybody. So obviously, the more that you log a sonar and upload, the more that everybody benefits. Because this is accurate mapping to one foot. I know right here, right here in Ohio, I could have picked anywhere, but you got to realize that Eight years ago, there was nothing. We were stuck with the base mapping, and if you were to overlay base mapping onto this layer, you'd realize how much this is changed and different from all, all of the base mapping layers, and I'm including expensive cards. This isn't, you know, this is something that's very, very different. Another thing that you can do, you can replay your sonar logs on the CMAP account, even both the pay account and the free account. It's available. Um, personally, 
I like playing my sonar logs back with a different format or on the unit itself. Um, the palette that you get to play back your sonar logs doesn't give me the detail and the colors that I like to use. But you know what? It's different for everybody. If you choose to go with the Genesis Edge account, it is a pay account, but you're actually going to gain some features. You have the you will gain the ability to keep sonar logs private, which will allow you to map out a secret spot. But I'm here to tell you, there's a lot less secret spots than you thought once you go to go to the Genesis maps and take a peek. Um, I know some guys have logged some of their flying fishing trips up in northern Ontario. It's not private. It's all part of the social layer. So why not just log them all in as public and that way everybody can gain the benefit. Also with the pay layer you gain some other features like composition and bottom hardness. I'll get into that in a minute. If you look here, this is an area that's been fully logged. Um, many of you have fished it or fished something just like it or at least rained your boat over it. If you notice We've actually picked up a small hump through here that on any other mapping has never existed. Without the ability of using sonar logs and sharing the account, we wouldn't be able to see this. I know I would fish this differently. This is just another zoomed in example of the basin at Huron, Ohio. Once again, if you notice the one foot contours, you're actually able to see some small spots that were never pre previously currently shown on mapping. And actually, you can actually navigate the river. I hesitate to say navigate because this is not an aid to navigation, but for small boat use, it can definitely show you where the sandbar is as long as somebody's recently logged it. So you gotta realize in the current situation, rivers can change the bottom depth or water levels can change it. So pay attention to the numbers on the screen. These are set to a mean lake level. At this time, they're, they do not adjust. So if you looked currently on the Great Lakes, you'd actually find that these depths are about three feet shallower this year than what's actually on the map. If we move on here, this is once again, the social layer, which you've just seen for the Huron Basin but now we've actually added bottom hardness. So not only do we have one foot accurate mapping, we actually have something else the fish relate to. What's on the bottom? The darker the red color, the harder the bottom, the closer to white or off white, the softer the bottom. If you were to come to this area and fish and somebody told you they were all on the soft bottom, you can eliminate 90% of the lake, at least in this area. Other areas of the lake, you might rather, they said it was on hard bottoms, you could eliminate 90% of the lake once again. But right here, this will actually save you time and money in gas alone. This is a zoomed in area. If you notice, we've actually got some soft transitions and some harder transitions between the different types of bottom composition. The fish relate to this. And I'm not saying predator fish, all fish, because bait fish need to eat too. Bait fish relate to the different bottom hardnesses because of whatever they are eating, which now draws a predator fish. There will probably always be one best bottom competition that the fish that you're after will be on on a given day. Once again, we're on the, that fully logged in area that didn't exist a few years ago. Yes, everybody says, okay, let's, let's work this area because it wasn't there. It does mean something. Well, how about we throw some bottom hardness on it? If all the fish were on the hard bottom, would you attack it differently? Or if all the fish were on the intermediate bottom, which is this other shade, would you attack it differently? Or can you attack it differently because of the current? Or did a friend just tell you, hey, I was on hard bottom. All you have to do is find the hard bottom. Once again, we're eliminating time and water that aren't holding the fish that you're after. Vegetation mapping, it's another option for the edge account holders. And it's 
it's another overlay layer, just like the composition layer. Don't be surprised if the vegetation moves, because obviously as vegetation grows off the bottom, it has the ability to fold over based on wind or current conditions. Um, this is actually a screenshot from some mapping done. Uh, I can't tell, I believe it was about six or seven years ago when the, the uh, user, Dean Cushman, a friend and captain who was actually using this to uh, log some weed beds on Houghton Lake for a tournament. All the fish were caught on an extremely windy day in holes in the vegetation. So not the edge of the weed bed, inside the weed bed. We assumed that this one single waypoint was actually open water because the weeds were so thick he was not going to pull fish out of the weeds. It's just the wind had blown the vegetation a different direction from the way it had been logged in before the map was created. So take certain bodies of water, or certain bodies of water that have a lot of current or get a lot of ice flows. The vegetation will actually shift from year to year because the bottom composition has changed. So it's a good thing to keep relogging an area on areas that are affected. That way you can keep on top of the fish. If you couldn't see the waypoints, this, this little directional arrow might help you. Um, I can say this, for this tournament, fishing in the holes in the weeds was so important that if he had had a second boat and gave him some of the fish that he had caught, he would have taken both first and second place. Why is mapping important? Because now we're, we're effectively going and targeting waters that you didn't know existed or weeds that you didn't know existed. Put it this way, I like to have fun. I like to catch fish. Why not use a tool that is inexpensive, easy to do, easy to share, that we can all benefit from. Thank you, and have a good evening.